How's it everyone? So, two or three most important weeks coming up now. Um, we have just seen Ronathan Vlaanderen won by Matteo Vanderpool, showing great form after injury. Now we've got uh, the Ardennes coming up, also Perry Bay. You know, Perry Bay has been moved because of the French elections, so uh, Amsterdam Gold is taking its place. So it's making a little bit of a shift in the calendar. Uh, we are now racing, like I said, Amstel, then Brabant to play. Normally it's the other way around. Roubaix is followed by that, and then we'll have Flesh and Liège. So there is a little bit of change, and uh, not much changes for me, not Roubaix. Uh, it's not a race I enjoy doing, but uh, I thought it'd be good to take you guys on a little ride today. Talk about uh, the Ardennes Classic race that I've done heaps of times, been part of a winning team there before. We're seeing a lot of the younger guys now kind of racing off script. You know, there used to be a format to winning these races and now we're seeing a lot of the young guys and uh, well generally everybody trying to change uh, the way we race. Talk you guys through it and uh, hope you enjoy. Uh, most of you guys have been watching uh, Froomey's channel but uh, I don't know where he takes his bike. I learned a lot of the tricks in the trade in my dad's shop back in the day, but as you can hear, no noise from here for me. Before I get started on the review of the all the classics coming up, but this climb is probably one of the most used climbs in Girona. So if you get a chance to ever head out this way, you want to head to a mare and do this climb. 8.3 k's long and 8.7% uh, average. Really steep at the bottom, the views are worth it at the top and uh, this is the place to train. Amstel Gold Race, um, one of my favorite races, actually my favorite race I think out there. The race have always come with a uh, few ambitions. I've been on teams where we've podiumed a few times with Simon Gerrans, Michael Matthews. Um, I think I've done it nine or ten times, and it's uh, it almost feels like you're in a Game Boy. It feels like you don't know where you are. Statistically, we see a big group, group going away early on in the race, but uh, you know that never really lasts till the end. Um, 200k to go, the Cooper bag, and uh, come up a steep ramp. Then on down a little tricky descent, big wide road, and then it comes to the most crucial part of the race, which turns left into the Crace Bag. And that goes into the icy box there, and uh, we have a succession of three climbs there. Um, very narrow roads, kind of where you turn left in that corner is where you'll stay for the next 30k. Descend down into the Cowberg, that's a very, very difficult climb. It always had a leg snapper for some guys, um, until we get to the final circuit, which has got two climbs in it. Not too overly hard, but at 230k into the race, and with a lot of attacks going on, um, it always opens the race. So, uh, very, very tricky final, um, flat finish, unique race because we've got guys coming from the, the, the Belgium Flemish classics, the, the cobbled classics, and then it's a mix of the cobbled guys and the guys for the Ardennes. So, this year with uh, Perry Bay coming later, a different field more uh, of those uh, cobble type riders coming to the race and maybe less of the, the guys targeting Liège based on Liège. So uh, guys, that's Amstel Gold. It's a race of attrition, it's a, a race of position more than anything else and knowing the roads. <laughs> I think I forgot to actually mention about Amstel's. I think I mentioned the Kuitenberg. That's probably one of the steepest things in Amstel. That's where the big boys play. If you can handle that, you'll probably handle the final. That's what I want to add on to that. But how's this view? Hey, well, this is good. Anyway, Brabant's Pale. We're probably going to see a different crowd. I don't know if guys from Perio Bay will now enter this race as a little hit up before the big one. Particularly, guys have done Amstel are going to be tied for Brabant's Pale, myself included. Normally, that's the leading to Amstel. So we're going to have a different group there again. Be interesting to see who actually just decided to use the free weekend for Amstel and uh, go do recon at Roubaix and maybe enter this race. Or the other way around, maybe they're just going to be doing recon instead of doing the race. But it's a lot of action. The team never wants to be on the back foot. It's difficult to chase. Narrow final, the guys get a gap there and it's really hard to get organized, especially with the narrow roads. The finish is a bit different to two or three years ago when I did it last. You need a team that can kind of Follow the attacks, still have a guy waiting, 
and uh, on the way out nothing big happens unless there's wind but coming to those final laps there cobbled little climbs narrow road space for only one car it's a fun one when you got legs so looking forward to that one you might be asking where the hell am I actually this is Pantas Esqueda today actually is probably my most favorite route um, training around Girona do a mare then Pantas Esqueda and then you head home it's around four four and a half hours in views climbs this kind of makes it all worth it so catch up soon guys I'm gonna have some to eat and finish my ride Instead of me talking about Perry Bay, because I know nothing about Perry Bay, I've done it once, but I'll tell you about my Perry Bay experience. I'll do it at the end of this video, and uh, I'll also tell you about who it is with, no other than Chris Froome. So, um, a fantastic story, one for you guys to listen, wait till the end to listen to, and also it's uh, the reason why I won't go back as well. So, and it also helps to know people in Belgium. Then we move on to Flesh for Lon. Also, Rated it as a semi-classic, although I don't think it should be a semi-classic. I think it's well up there with the monuments. Maybe not in distance, but uh, definitely in finishes and um, history. It's a big start, big open roads. It can be windy at the start, so we can see echelons, actually. Murderhoy, I think, three times. But really, the second time that we go up there is when the floodgates start to open and where the race really kicks off. So there, if you've got numbers, you can control the race. There, if you've lost a few guys and you have to chase and you get put on the back foot, that's where you can lose the race completely. You know, we've got two little climbs after murder. They're not little climbs, they're quite uh, tough. And they are becoming more important because guys are attacking earlier now. And also, nobody wants to be chasing before the last lap up murder hoy. That being said, you also need the numbers to nail the run into the final. It's a huge road next to the, the river. And if you can't have two or three guys there to position your leader going into that final 1k to go um, and your leader has to spend some energy before the final um, you can basically count their chances out then we've got the climb 1k super steep we've got ramps of about 23 25 percent so those who have nailed the run into the finish will be in the front those that are aching those have got a little bit of lactate from the other climbs i can guarantee you they'll be going backwards guys with the legs guys with the canniness to be in the front without doing, spending too much energy and those with the team that can nail the running. And last but not least, Radoyen, an epic race deserves an epic view. This race particularly can be won by multiple different kinds of riders. Classic rider, climber, anything. It's a very long race. Every year it's the race where I spend the most kilojoules, running close to 6,000 kilojoules for the day. It's about six and a half hours of racing. It's a race that's pretty close to me too because um, I've been in a team that's won it before. Simon Gerens, he won the race for us. And, uh, Jeez, that was a massive day. I remember he kind of counted himself out and then going up St. Nicola, he was got over the front there and Peter Weening helped him uh, win the race. And uh, you know, the magnitude of it and the way the team felt afterwards was pretty special to be, to be a part of that team. It's a fond memory of mine if I look back at my career. You know, I've raced it in the snow. Albacini was close to winning it. He podiumed as well. So we've had a couple good days there. The last year, Mark Woods was in the front group there sprinting for the win i mean all these races is about position position all the time um it's about knowledge it's about legs it's everything that's what makes these races so special when you go into the hort of you kind of got a cobbled strip before that uphill as well so you go up a super narrow climb descend down straight onto cobbles climbing upwards and then you hit the hort of and that kind of opens up the race big wide road near the top a lot of attacks start to go team showing their cards then there's a few other climbs, you know, I don't know all the names, but uh, come down a massive, massive highway down low to Laredoux. Now this, we're so going 75, 80k an hour. I've also crashed down there at 80k an hour in a big group. Anyway, it's uh, gone and forgotten. Particularly, nothing will go on Laredoux. But if you saved your legs then you haven't had to play catch up up Laredoux, you are 
prime position to to do a great final it runs into a key part which is the Facons, Rochelle Facons. This is a crucial, crucial part of the race. This is where the race actually lights up. This is where, if you've got the legs, you go. If you don't have the legs, it's no. You're going straight out the back. There's no comeback. There's no, I'll sit in the slipstream afterwards. The guys have got the legs. It's uh, 10K, 10, 15K to go. Guys have got the legs, go from there to the finish line. After that climb, it's pretty much flat and downhill to the finish. I mean, the punchy riders are so good. You know, guys like Wolf van Art, Van der Poel, these kinds of guys can get over those steep things still. Um, it just depends how hard the race is done throughout the day. If the weather turns foul, it's a different ball game, it's a different race. It changes everything, guys who have the legs don't have the legs anymore because they're freezing. It's about guys who can control their bikes, change raincoats, keep warm, have a level head, know how to eat. It's all about nutrition, it's all about um, passion and it's about uh, being in the right place right time and having the right legs i chat about through me i'll do it at home so the good part the story about Roubaix, my first Roubaix. let me give you some context behind it though First year, Neo Pro. Never been in Europe in my life. Actually, never raced that much either because I came from South Africa. Get chucked into all these other races, Shell de Price, E3, you didn't even know about these races. Then, anyway, we're going to do. We did Van Drenthe. Van Drenthe the day before. Chris Room and I. He actually got disqualified in that race for going on the, on the riding on the footpath instead of the cobbles. And then we drove through the night and we arrived back in um, for the start. Just in time, at about 2 a.m. we arrived. At 7 a.m. we were woken up to eat breakfast. And on the way to Perry Bay. I remember Baden Cook in the race, sending me back for bottles at 100k to go. And uh, I never saw the front of the race ever again. I had a whole jersey full of full of bottles. And um, couldn't move up the bunch, couldn't get to do my job. And that was the end of my race. So once all the crashes and all those things happened, and I was in the cars, I ran into old Frumi who'd been dropped as well and um, you know we kind of I just said well it's over now we were just in the cars and it was just dust just big dust festival and um, I remember saying to him well man it's done now there's nothing we can do once we get onto the concrete road the cars are gonna go and we're gonna be left in no man's land but he was so convinced that we were gonna make it back because we were still in the cars he was convinced we were still in the race and uh, I remember leaving him and saying, well, you go ahead, you go make it. And you couldn't see in front of you. You could not literally see one meter in front of you. He was behind the cars and the next minute you just see these red lights coming from the official car. <laughs> playing into the back of it, Chris, playing into the back. Anyway, I stopped there, waited for him and said, listen, have you had enough now? And uh, is that the end? And uh, we got to this road to the second feed zone. I mean, he was... We, we got to the second feed zone and I remember him complaining about the state of the wheel saying they don't really last as long on the pave but I remember him actually crashing into a car as well which damaged the wheel. Um, needless to say it was just the two of us kind of out the back and uh, fortunately my, my wife, or she was my girlfriend then, came to watch the races with a friend of ours from Belgium and they were waiting in the second feed zone for us. All the cars had gone, every single body, not our own team car, nothing. So we arrived at the second feed zone, there was not even a any other team that could take us to the finish so we hopped into my mate's car and he took us to the finish and i remember us coming to the to where the team buses were parked and uh <laughs> and they wouldn't let him in and we said no there's two two riders in the car we managed to fit in like a little fiesta two bikes my wife in between chris and i in the back seat and then uh, my my friend and his his friend as well from belgium driving us to the finish line so um, that was my first and only experience of Perry Bay and that's why I cannot give you guys any tips about the race because I am not knowledgeable enough about anything of that race. Uh, whether or not going to those races at such a young age and not knowing what I was doing scarred me but uh, I've never wanted to re return. I, I love watching it. I think it's a fantastic race but um, it's definitely not for me so uh, I'll stick to the audience and hopefully have a good week there and uh it's quite it will be quite fun to to have it in between my races so give us some viewing pleasure thanks guys see you later